everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps, where we will not be making soap today. As many of you know, I am a professional soap maker. In the video that I did right here, that went kind of viral actually, which was very surprising considering that it's about soap, I declared that I was a professional soap maker and was met with some interesting comments about what even is that. Well, I'll break it down for you. I make soap from scratch and people buy it, thus making me a professional. I am not a professional resin person. Resin crafter? Resin wizard? I don't know what the resin people call themselves. That's how little I know about it. But many of y'all suggested that I try making resin things. I know of resin's existence, but I'm not going to say that I am in any way, shape, or form very educated about it. Today, I'm going to be experimenting and you guys get to watch. I am specifically going to attempt some mermaid tail charms because many moons ago, I created a soap called Mermaid Treasure and it had mermaid tails on it and everyone loved them, but every time I shipped them, they broke. And not that long ago, it just out of nowhere occurred to me, what if I made tails out of something else besides soap so that people could keep them as a charm and they couldn't break during shipping? And that's where resin made the most sense. I know a lot of people like to buy resin charms. And in the same way that slime people include charms for you to squish up in your slime and then you get to keep it when you're done with the slime, I thought, wouldn't it be cool for me to make charms for my soap to put on my soap that once the soap is done, you could just keep it as like a keepsake. So I don't know if this is a completely feasible idea, I've never really worked with resin before. I did it one time very, very badly many, many years ago. So it's basically starting afresh. If you want true resin tutorials and you want to listen to someone who knows what they're talking about, you should check out these two YouTube channels. The Artsy Madwoman YouTube channel and Evan and Caitlin's YouTube channel. These wonderful humans are very, very creative, very, very talented and know what they're talking about when it comes to resin. So for tutorials and the like, go go watch their stuff. D don't watch me for that. I don't know what I'm doing. As the title suggests, I'm like trying this for the first time. Now something that has always put me off from resin is that you have to measure by volume and not by weight. And that freaks me out because volume measurements are not as precise as weight measurements and I'm bad at pouring stuff. All the same, we're gonna see the different types of mermaid tails I can try to make if any of them turn out good and if this is something I can feasibly use for royalty soaps in the future. So without further ado, let me show you guys all my stuff. So first I have my mermaid tail molds and if I have it my way, I'm going to try to fill up both of these trays with different styles of the resin. So there's those. I also have these brushes that were sent to my PO box that I'm going to use to coat some of these molds with some mica. I thought I might try to throw in some soap making ingredients, see how well they work with resin. So that's what these are for. I bought some really pretty flaky glitters from Amazon. Um, I think these are from like a Born Pretty shop. I, I think that might be a nail art shop. I'm not entirely sure, but I'll leave you guys a link to everything I'm using down in the description box below in case this goes well and you wanna try resin yourself at home. I also bought this box of resin colors. They look very much like soap colors and I wonder what the difference is, but there's no ingredients listed so who knows I've also got some of my own glitter that I have around here I thought maybe it would be fun to try some fairy dusters on the last one see if that looks good I don't know and then I bought this Dr. Crafty resin and hardener duo it comes with instructions some little stirring things little pouring things it comes with a lot of stuff it was very well rated and that's why I bought it you can also get like free micas it looks like and, and I, I don't don't know it, it looks cool though they seem to be doing a good job so the first thing I know I have to do is put on gloves so from what I can figure there's two different types of resin there's epoxy resin which is what I have here and then there's UV resin that you cure with a UV light and I did not want to go to all that trouble so I am using epoxy resin today and because I feel it might 
might be kind of difficult to add like mica to these silicone molds after I've already poured a row of resin in it. I'm going to put all the mica that I'm gonna use today in the mold before we begin. So first I'm gonna put in some Sparkle Me Aqua. So I'm just gonna put that all around here, maybe on these first two. And then I'm gonna spritz some, what's this? Sparkle Me Blue? Yeah, Sparkle Me Blue on this next one. I'm gonna try to stick with some mermaidy type colors here. Okay, now I'm gonna try the mica. So I'm gonna use some of my own micas for this. I'm gonna use Cosmic Carolyn first. I'm just gonna dip my little brush in there and then brush the inside of this mold. And like I said, never really done this before, so I don't really know how much I should add, if I should add like a whole lot, or if I should just make sure that it's decently colored. I, I don't know. First one, I'm gonna do all the same color, but then after that, I might try to blend them, like maybe make the tail a different color. Okay, let's try it with making the tail like purple. I feel like this isn't even going to color it. I feel like this is going to do absolutely nothing and that I'm just wasting my time, but that's okay. That's what experiments are for. That purple I just used is Harold's Purple Crayon from Mad Micah's, and now I'm using Caribbean Blue from Fizz Fairy. Again, these are colorant suppliers that cater to soap makers, but that doesn't necessarily mean it can only be used for soap. I know some people like to use it with resin. Some people like to use it with polymer clay. All the micas that I will be using in today's video are ethically sourced. I should just throw that out there. Ooh, what if we did a, a green tail? This is green vibrance mica from Nurture Soap. Just put a little green in there. See how we like that. Whether or not this works, it does look really, really pretty in the mold. Okay, so I have accurately dusted these first ones. So let's mix up some some resin. I feel like these guys should probably have an opaque back, but these guys right here could probably have a clear one. So let's start with clear. I'm getting all the way down and trying to pour this as equally as possible. I'm gonna mix up, it looks like about 20 milliliters. So for this first one, it's only about 10. I don't know if that's gonna be enough, but I'd rather do a little bit too little and have to mix up some more than do too much. Okay, let's add some blue in here. Okay, just a note, you have to cut the tips off of these little squeezy bottles. Oh gosh, I wonder how much that's gonna pigment this. Ooh, let's add a little, a little more. I like that. In fact, let's add a little bit of this Caribbean blue mica and see if that will make it kind of shiny and stuff. I'll zoom you guys in a little while I mix this up. And I have to mix it for at least two minutes is what the box said. Hey, I think I've mixed this for as long as I'm supposed to. So now I'm going to pour it into this mold. Oh, it's much thicker than I thought it was going to be. Oh, golly. Um, did I pour too much? Let's try to pour this second one. Ooh. Okay. So now, now I think I want to add some glitter. I wonder if this is going to actually like sink right to the bottom or if it'll stay suspended. Just added a little more glitter in there, including some sort of like flaky unicorn skin glitter. That looks fun. Okay. Let's pour this. I just wonder if all that glitter is gonna sink or if it'll stay this way. I don't know. Also say resin pours so differently than soap. It's so much thicker and yet somehow more fluid. Like it goes into little cracks. Yeah, this goes into cracks that soap would not ordinarily travel into. Looks like that was a bit much. Um, so I'm gonna pour some of the rest of it into this overflow container I have over here. I wonder if they make opaque resin. I bet they do. I'm gonna add some white to this and see what it does. Maybe that's what the white is for, is to make opaque resin. Ooh, yes. It, it seems like that kind of clouds it up a little bit. Okay, so that was pretty good for a first run. That little tiny bit of resin makes eight of these things, so that's just a lot. Okay, and because I know that teeny tiny bit makes eight this time, I'm going to add more mica to these so that we can test it more accurately. I know I already have some resin in this tray, but hopefully I can be gentle enough that it won't disrupt it too much. What if I did a mica blend, like with this apricot color? I believe this is cantaloupe. Yeah, that's cantaloupe from Nurture Soap. What if I just did a fade like this? 
this into nothing. So it fades into the tail, but it's like just, you know, kind of goes to white or whatever. I also have this lollipop crystal mica, which has a bit more sparkle than my other micas. Ooh, I like this lavender one. What if we did the fade the other way where we put most of the mica down here and then kind of went up like this. And now for the oleander pink, you know, I don't like oleander pink in soap. It's so misbehaving, but what does it look like in resin? Maybe it'll be super pretty. Okay, so let's add a lot of white to this one this time. I'm gonna add some sparkles. These are those kind of like unicorn scale flaky pieces. I'm also going to add a little bit of my Sparkle Plenty mica, and I'm going to mix this up. Okay, so I've mixed it all up. It looks pretty good, and I'm going to try to pour less into these molds. I think I overfilled them a little last time. Like, I think that's good, even though with soap, it would never make it to the edges. I feel like the resin just kind of levels itself out, and it'll just It'll make it all the way to that corner. Yeah, see, there it goes. Crazy. Even that one I filled up a little much. Let's try to do a little less in this one. Maybe I should just fill that up, watch it sink down, and then see what else it needs. Maybe like a little tiny stripe. That. I think this might actually work. Okay, so here's to hoping that that looks anything like it's supposed to or what I had envisioned. I have a little extra, so I think I'm gonna pour it in this one and then see what happens if once I pour this in, I pour some of the next batch in and maybe it's clear? I don't know, I don't know, we'll have to see. Okay, so this next batch, I want to be super, super clear with like a teeny tiny hint of pink, so I'm just gonna put one little pink dollop. This has a very unicorny look. Let's, let's put some of this in there. Oh, I should get some more of my glitters over there. Okay, let's mix all this up and see what we think. Okay, so I've mixed this for about two minutes now. I'm gonna pour it. Ooh, it does blend into this one. Neato. Can I, like, mix it, maybe? I can. Even though it's been sitting there for so long, it still mixes. Crazy. Wow, this is like a better version of melt and pour soap making. More workable time. More glitters you can add. Ooh. I brought in a moon mold in case I don't want to uh, use all the rest of this. But what if I like fill the mermaid tail halfway with this glittery stuff here at the bottom, let it leak into the top and then mix the top with white. I mean, in theory, this could work. It worked with this one right here. Okay, mix the white in. So let's add that now to the tails. Ooh, okay, so I'm gonna take, where's my wee? It's teeny tiny. Yes, my toothpick. Okay, I'm gonna bring this to the corners and sort of blend it in a little. Like, hey, come on down in here, mix it up. Ooh, swirly. Yes, this seems to be working quite good. Ugh, that's so pretty. Okay, I think I've done all the tests that I need to do because I have an opaque background, I have mixed colors, I have a clear background, and I have a glittery background. So now all I have to do is wait three days. That's gonna be extremely difficult. Hello, yes, it is me. I am back the next day, and I didn't wait 72 hours. I only waited like 18. The tails are still a little bendy, but they're definitely hard enough to take out of the mold. I took a few out just to make sure. I'm honestly really glad that they hardened at all. I'm putting on a pair of gloves, not because I'm worried about resin getting on my hands, but because my nails are so bad they would be destroyed. Okay, so here's our first pour. That's what these guys are. These don't have any glitter. 
Ooh, that looks nice. So this is the sparkle blue. This is the sparkle me aqua. I like the aqua one more. Both of them look really good. And then with both the sparkle me aqua and the sparkle me blue, I also had some that I added glitter to. So you can see here's sparkle me aqua, here's sparkle me blue. I don't think I like the glitter as much. It does all sink to the bottom, which I didn't know if it would do that. I like the look of this better. Okay, so now let's go along to the ones that took a little more time. These are the mica ones. Ooh, yeah, now you can see there's a lot of detail with the mica. Yes, yes. Oh, we like this. These these look really, really nice. Oh, look at this purple. I accidentally put some glitter in the tail, and I think that ends up looking pretty good. I really like these. These look super nice. Also, of course, I start looking at resin art stuff last night and saw that somebody did the exact same technique that I just did on their resin art channel. Cause I was like, wow, maybe someone has techniques for mermaid tails that I should definitely have looked up before I tried to do resin. And turns out they did like the exact same thing. So I'm gonna link that video down below if you guys wanna watch her make them. They look so good. These were the ones that I didn't put mica all the way down the tail. I kind of faded the mica from one spot into the next spot. So those look really nice too. I specifically like these. I kind of like it all at the bottom fading into the white at the top, but this looks nice too, especially the champagne color. I kind of picked bridal colors, but <laughs> I feel like this would work good for blue or pink or whatever, and you could change that background color to like purple. You, you could do a lot with that. Okay, so now for the glittery ones. Here's the two glitter. Let me peel that out there. Whoa. Now that's a lot. <laughs> I really like the sparkles, but I do think it's kind of hard to tell what these are. Here's one that's split. Ooh, now I really like the split because it is easier to tell like what this thing actually is but it still looks really nice. How about this pink one? Ooh, I kind of like that. The um, the glitter looks pretty scaly. I'm gonna move you guys even closer for this. Here's one of the blues that you remember me pouring from the beginning that I added white to, so it's a little more opaque. That's pretty. Yeah, let's look at these splits. So the glitter in these make it look like real fish scales. I don't know if I like it though. I can't decide if I like it looking like real fish scales or if I want it to look a little faker. Okay, here's some just regular blue glitter that I had left over. Again, I think you definitely need to use less glitter. I thought it would say suspended, but it didn't. So <laughs> I was left with some weirdness. Okay, these are really sparkly. I added some very micro fine glitter into this. I don't like these. I don't like these nearly as much. Ooh, yeah, too much microfine glitter on these guys because the color meld on the back looks so cool, but it's completely covered by the glitter, so you don't get to see that cool blue to teal transition that's so obvious on the back. But these really dark ones. Yep, still too much glitter. Oh, now that one's been dusted. Yeah. Now, I really like that because you can see the details a lot more. I think I dusted that with white. That looks super cool. I really like that one. Boop, 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 boop. Here are all my finished mermaid tails. Now I'm gonna put these in sections and then I want you guys to tell me which ones are your favorite. Which mermaid tails do you like looking at? So I've got this section with a lot of micro fine glitter on it. I probably won't be remaking these because I don't like them. I'm just gonna take those out. Okay, so we basically have six categories. We have chunky clear glitter. We have the split micas. This one wasn't split, it was all one color but like this where it's like purple at the top blue at the bottom so the split tone mica we have the glittery translucent tails we have the ombre tails that kind of color melt into one another I really like those and then we have the sparkly shimmer with just a plain blue background and then we have an ombre with a dark background and glitter so there's like six different categories I'm leaning towards this one 
one, this one, and honestly, this one. I really like it. And honestly, I kind of like just a teeny bit of this glitter maybe in with this. Like, I really like it in the tail up here, but leaning pretty heavy towards these guys over here, but I definitely want to know what y'all think. So let me know down in the comments below. I'm pretty pleased with the way these turned out. I can see room for lots of improvement, but for my first time, I think these pass. If you are a resin crafter and want to leave me some tips and advice down below, if you saw things that I was doing that maybe weren't the best idea, let me know. I want to get better. Would you guys like to see me try UV resin? That's a completely different type. Yes, it requires a UV lamp, but I would be willing to splurge and give it a shot if that's what y'all want, because I'm here for your entertainment. Also, if there are other crafts that I as a soap maker you would like to see me try. Let me know down below. So far, I have dyed my brother's hair and I have done resin. So if there's other crafts you think I should try, let me know. I kind of want to try weaving. I also kind of want to try doing stuff with tie dye. I know it's so popular right now, but listen, let me make a case for myself. I was wearing scrunchies before scrunchies were cool. I also wore tie dye before it was cool. But now that it is cool, everything is so much more accessible. It's delightful. I'm always happy if something I was doing becomes a trend because I'm like, good, now I can find them all over the place instead of having to scour the internet for some obscure site that carries them. That's a lot of rambling. And I am going to put these in some soap. I will probably make a TikTok of it. I hope you guys have an absolutely royal day and I will see you back here soon for another installment of the 2020 Secret Soap Series. And so until then, be sure you do something fun for yourself today and bye for now. Yeah. Oh, I got gloves on still. Here. Yeah.